Welcome everybody to today's Minecraft Bedrock Survival Let's Play from the Forever Bedrock SMP. Today we are going to go over some tips to master Minecraft's early game and unleash the power of an iron farm, super smelter, a villager breeder, and plus we're going to get into some essential base tips like sugarcane farming, infinite lava sources, and XP boosting potato smokers. If you saw our previous episode, then you'll know that we let the viewers choose the initial community farms that we would all be building. Now, we are playing on a multiplayer server, but these are the exact same farms that you would want to get going and builds that you would want to get going on early game survival. Myself and I and Fluffy90 were tasked with putting together a villager breeder. Not only did we want a design that would allow us infinite villagers, we also wanted the all-important ability to zombify and cure villagers so that we could actually set prices at their lowest levels for villagers if there were trades involved right from the start. The process for healing and curing your villagers to get the lowest price involves trapping first a zombie. Then what you'll want to do is take one of your villagers from the breeder and set that villager up with his profession. Once you like the trade that that villager has, you want to go ahead and introduce him to your zombie so that he becomes a zombie himself, and that way you can cure him. You use a weakness potion and a golden apple to cure him, and once he is cured, he will have a permanent price reduction. If the price is still higher than you would like, you simply repeat the process until you get the price down to the emerald cost that you would like which can be as low as one for most things. We have got wind though that Mojang are in the process of nerfing this stacked discount with villagers soon and possibly the very next update. We'll have more on this as it becomes available for sure. So be sure to get your discounts now while they last. And moving right along now is an iron farm. Despite the iron farm being the only one that Lunar Moon wanted absolutely nothing to do with and the viewers choices of farms to build, the iron farm was chosen for her and her teammate Juggerite. I pray I don't get the iron farm, but I'm probably going to get the iron farm now. Well, if you do, hopefully you get a, a good... Iron is truly a game changer in early game Minecraft, but mining for it can be time consuming and tiresome. It's one of the major advancements in early game play. You can e easily defeat the Ender Dragon in iron gear only and iron tools with a little bit of strategy and possibly some decent enchantments. And once the Ender Dragon is defeated, that of course unlocks the riches in the end. Uh, with an Iron Farm, you can equip yourself with Diamond Gear also. Depends on which villagers you choose to use. If you use Weaponsmiths, Toolsmiths, and Armorers, you can easily equip yourself right up to Diamond Gear without any more mining than is absolutely necessary. So an Iron Farm early game is absolutely critical. As you can see here, it was uh, quite the team effort between uh, Juggerite and Lunar Moon. She came up with the design for the exterior iron farm factory. And Juggerite came up with the design of the actual iron farm to fit within. It was truly a team effort and came together pretty awesome. We're looking at about 420 ingots per hour. Uh, with the iron farm that they were able to build and it came out quite amazing if you guys have any guesses comment below if you know what irl building in the uk that the factory was based on and that brings us to our final first round of team builds which was a super smelter and joe nathan and freb were chosen for the super smelter task with our uh, randomizer that we were using there uh, what we have here, Joe, Nathan, and Fred came up with a 32 furnace array, and uh, this drastically improves the efficiency of smelting down sand into glass and clay into uh, brick, making all of our future builds a heck of a lot more efficient. Um, one other reason that you want to get one of these things going early on is the fact that these are actually XP banks. Now, it's not as cool as it was in the past in Bedrock, where the furnaces actually used to store and stack the XP. But the more you smelt, especially ores um, and food items like chicken and, and uh, steak, you will get XP as you accumulate cooking those items. Uh, so let alone the efficiencies that you're going to get, you're going to also use these early game for XP sources and mending tools. Now, what we also have here... 
Uh, we took out the uh, furnaces, or the blast furnaces, and the smokers here because we're working on a trading hall nearby. But that's what these two setups were. This was the one for smokers, for uh, cooking down food super fast, and blast furnaces there on the other side. Super smelter, super important. And before we move on, I want to just encourage everybody to check out all of the other Forever Bedrockers videos uh, of all these builds. And now let's move into a few things early game that are going to be specific things you can do around your base that will help you advance early game. Well, let's face it, early game, there's three main things that you want to focus on. And those are efficiency as far as getting your resources and changing those turning those into usable materials xp and trading those are the three main things that you want to get going as early game as possible to help you advance further into the game easier and now let's get into a few of those that are base specific and one is this sugarcane farm here um, like I said, we have one in the community area, but we also put one in over at our base so that while we're here working, there is constantly sugarcane growing. And the main reason that you want sugarcane is to enable trading with librarians. Librarians, um, going back to the trading point, librarians are going to be the key to getting the best gear as quick as possible and that trading also is another form of xp and since we're by the water we actually went ahead and put in a kelp farm these grow automatically as long as we are loading the chunks so anytime we're working around the base or fishing or anything like that we have constant supply of these things growing kelp itself is uh, another source of xp by smelting it down you can get xp from the furnaces it's also a fuel source with that little uh, sugarcane farm there this is a good example of just something the amount of sugarcane that we can get just uh piddling around the base and building things like this here which is our infinite lava source early game there uh, is a new switch to bamboo which is a really easily obtainable fuel source but if you have uh, access to some dripstone Putting in an infinite lava source like this is an awesome way to constantly have fuel and not have to spend time uh, mining for coal. It just makes things so much easier. And then let's talk about one more XP source because of XP being so important early game. This is a t uh, little section of two 9x9 potato farms. These two 9x9 potato farms, like our sugarcane and kelp, are constantly growing anytime we have the chunks loaded over here while we're working. And of course, what we can do is smelt those potatoes down into baked potatoes. And again, we have another XP source. And then just the efficiency factor of having these three farms that grow constantly while we're loading the chunks. Once we get the XP from the furnaces from the baked potatoes, if we don't want to use it as a food source, the other thing that we need a ton of early game is bone meal. Okay, go ahead and set up a composter set up like this and chuck all the baked potatoes in there for a pretty infinite supply of bone meal. Now guys, I want you to do me a favor and scroll back to the six minute mark because it sure seems like nowadays we can't get through a Minecraft episode without talking about a bug of some sort within the game. If you scroll back to the six minute mark is where we took off our little adventure here about base specific things, we were full on hunger. We have done nothing here out of the ordinary. No crazy jumping around, uh, no damage taken or anything. But look at how many food bars we have already gone through in just a little bit of a tour around the base. What seems like is happening that we've noticed is that your first hunger bar is normal. It, it lasts a normal amount of time. But as soon as your hunger bars start to go down, it's an incrementally out of proportion amount that your hunger goes down. Like I say, we've lost four bars of hunger basically just walking around tour in the base. We are going to look up. I'm going to go ahead and look up if there is a bug report on this. If there is, I will link it in the description. Let us know in the comments if you guys are also experiencing this bug with the, uh, the, the hunger bar going down too fast. 
And if I am able to link a bug report specific to this in the description, please go upvote it so that we can get this changed. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the tips for early game and getting yourselves uh, set up for success. Don't forget to like and share the video with your friends if you did find any of the tips useful. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our future episodes coming up. Take it easy, everyone. We will see you next time.